Hi everybody, your homeless friend Kai here, uh, coming to you from a hobbit hob hole in an undisclosed location. Um, fresh from uh, surgery. Um, I, uh, since I'm laid up and I have to rest, um, I figured I would um, answer a uh, few of the questions that I'm most commonly asked. Um, uh, the first one, um, how did you end up homeless? Um, now, uh, for you guys, it's okay uh, to ask me. I freely and willingly share my story so that you can understand how easy it is to become homeless and um, that it can happen to anybody. Um, but or a future reference, uh, probably not a good idea to ask other homeless people how they became homeless. Um, it's like uh, asking a rape victim to relive their rape, or um, I mean, you're basically asking them to relive the most horrible experience in their life where they had everything they owned uh, taken away from them. They were stri stripped of their dignity and their pride and forced to uh, live on the streets, you know, do stuff like eating out of garbage cans, which I've had to do, uh, begging for money. It's very humiliating, which I've also had to do. Um, uh, I, the simple answer, I got sick. Um, I uh, started developing uh, symptoms with my ataxia about five years ago, um, and I, uh, oh shit, it's been longer than that. Um, okay, 2011, I started developing symptoms from my ataxia, and they were misdiagnosed um, as lead poisoning because the doctor tested my blood and found out there were higher than average lead levels um, in my blood. Uh, so he thought it was heavy metal poison and causing my symptoms. Um, so he put me on chelation, which, anyway, misdiagnosis, mistreatment, uh, ending up, ended up, uh, giving me severe heart problems, um, and, uh, put me in the hospital for nine days. Uh, and I, uh, was a semi-successful small business owner. I owned Kai's Mobile Auto Detailing and Mermaid's Maid Service, uh, you know, we were busy every single day of the week. Um, on the side, I was repairing appliances and uh, LCD and plasma screen TVs. Uh, if you're old enough to remember when they first came out, they were uh, frying themselves within six months and uh, I would spend $6 on uh, capacitors, get the TVs for free off Craigslist, uh, solder them into the new board, or solder them into the boards and uh, sell the TVs for uh, between three and 600 bucks, depending on the size. And uh, I was doing four or five TVs a week. Um, so I was making good money just on the side. That's not including my two businesses, which were doing well. Um, and uh, I spent nine days in the hospital and uh, Nine days of no call, no shows in the maid service and the auto detailing business uh, can kind of ruin you. And uh, within six months, I had spent all my savings trying to rebuild up my reputation and uh, fix failing businesses that I really had. I thought about it, should have walked away from at that point because Everything on this island is word of mouth. And uh, once you screw up, there's no coming back from that. So, um, so yeah, I should have let the businesses go, but I tried to keep them afloat. I tried to keep my girls working um, and uh, it didn't work. Uh, so within six months, I'd spent all my savings, lost my businesses. Um, I, uh, the um, appliance repair business was doing some business, uh, but the uh, LCD screen TVs were drying up. Um, 
And uh, I was barely able to, uh, to pay rent and bills. Um, and uh, what happened was I was uh, half a month's rent behind on my rent for a, um, a couple of months. Um, and my landlord filed for eviction and I was supposed to be served with paperwork, uh, but I was never served the paperwork. Apparently the person he paid to serve me with the paperwork just signed it themselves and gave it back to him or that's his story. But the only notice I got was when the sheriff showed up at my door and gave me 30 minutes to pack what I could and get out. Um, uh, at that time, I had sold my car to keep up with bills and rent. I was riding around on a scooter and uh, I, I really, I couldn't take much with me. I mean, I had thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of stuff that I lost. Uh, memory foam bed, uh, huge TV in every room, including the bathroom. Uh, no, uh, my man cave with my refrigerators and video game systems and like all the uh, cool stuff. I, I had a $1,500 recliner that had like cup holders in it and a storage space for snacks <laughs> and a, a small refrigerator in one handle that could hold a six pack of sodas was <laughs> and yeah I got it used for fifteen hundred dollars it was beautiful it was amazing anyway uh but yeah I lost um I lost everything in a day with no notice and um Yeah, my story is um, unique in the fact that it doesn't happen to everybody, um, but it happened to me. So it can happen to you. It's possible. Um, don't ever take anything like that for granted. Um, Uh, for years, um, I, uh, I had nightmares about having everything I owned taken away from me and ending up on the streets. I would wake up in a cold sweat, having panic attacks, not being able to breathe. Um, anyway, my first year on the streets, I, uh, got a job as a maintenance man. Um, I, uh, I was still able to uh, walk, um, but uh, yeah, I, um, I had a job, I was working, um, I was working as a maintenance man, and uh, I uh, started to build my first camp, and my first camp was out in the Kiave trees, or, thorny trees for mainlanders who don't know what Kiave is. Uh, it's Western Mesquite. Um, anyway, uh, I decided that I was going to make this beautiful camp uh, with everything that a house would have. Uh, it was going to be outdoors. And uh, I was working so I was able to afford stuff. So I bought a solar panel and a generator and uh, I had cordless power tools, um, so I was out there building. I built myself a shower. I built myself a water tower with a 55-gallon drum on top uh, and PVC piping that went all the way back to my camp um, for a shower and a flushing toilet um, that I had. Uh, I'd made my own septic system out of a 55-gallon drum uh, that I buried. Um, anyway. Yeah, I had flushing toilet, I had shower, um, and gravity-fed running water. Um, 
And uh, when I moved into the camp, I made the mistake of saying, it's gonna take bulldozers to get me out of there. And a year after building that camp, um, they brought a bulldozer. Um, it had been raining for three days, uh, and a friend of mine said I could stay at his house uh, while it's raining. And when I got back to camp, there was no camp. Everything had been bulldozed, uh, thrown into a giant dumpster, and it was all gone. Um, wouldn't save me any of it. Um, it was about then I got uh, news that um, I was having, well, back to the uh, story at hand. Um, they bulldozed my camp, and again, uh, uh, everything I own taken away from me in a heartbeat. Um, and after that it took um, another five years before I um, had the strength to build another camp. Um, and uh, you've seen what I'm doing with my camp. Um, like, the, I'm building it as nice as I built the last one, and uh, maybe even nicer eventually. Uh, it's a roof over my head this time. Uh, somebody can still come and take it away at any time, but um, I'm doing it. Um, you can lose everything you own repeatedly. And if you work real hard, you can get it all back. Um, so it's not easy. Um, and you have to deal with the fact that at any time you can lose it again. But the truth is, any of you can lose everything you have at, the mo at a moment's notice and drop a hat. Uh, whether it be a massive storm, flooding, fire, um, you can lose everything you own at the drop of a hat. Um, and you may never come back from that. Uh, it takes strength and it takes courage and it takes knowing that you can do it and hopefully in some way I can help with these videos if this happens to you. Uh, have the strength, have the courage to, to, to build on, to go on, to move on. Um, you know, uh, being in fear of someone coming and taking everything you own or losing everything you own is no excuse not to rebuild. Uh, rebuild. Build your life bigger, better, and stronger every time someone takes it away from you. Let them know that they cannot break you. Let the world know that a storm cannot break you, a fire cannot break you, the government stealing your house because you couldn't pay your taxes, the banks taking it because you couldn't pay your loans. Let the world know you're stronger than that. And uh, every time they beat you down, get back up. Say, thank you, sir, may I have another? Here's some more stuff. Uh, obviously, you like my stuff. Here's, here's what else I can do. Uh, here's bigger, here's better. Um, maybe if I give you enough of it, you'll let me keep some. But, you know, the biggest reason for me always wanting to rebuild is I'm spoiled. I'm, you know, I like my luxuries. I like having running water. I like having a flushing toilet. I like having my movie screen. Uh, the projector I have now is only a $36 eBay projector, but it does a uh, 80 inch screen on the wall pixelated and a very good picture, but it's it's a big picture and I like big because 
No, um, I don't see very well. And yeah, I just like big pictures. Um, anyway, I like. Uh, no, I like having a kitchen. I like um, having a real bed. And no matter how many times somebody takes that stuff away from me, I'm gonna get that stuff back because it's important to me. And you know, no matter how homeless I am, I'm gonna be doing my best to live like everybody else. You know, I mean, shit. Doing pretty good for a uh, homeless guy I got. Uh, internet. I got two twin beds with memory foam toppers. I got a futon. I got. Yeah, I've got stuff. Uh, I know it's only a matter of time until I lose it all, either by hook or by crook. Um, but uh, that's life. Life is struggle. Life is strife. Life is turmoil, life is chaos. Um, if you live a boring life, God bless you. Uh, you know, there's an old uh, Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. And you know, the moral being that interesting is drama, interesting is struggle, you know, interesting is adventure that doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. But, uh, I don't know, I live in interesting times. I kind of like it. I am my best self. Um, well, anyway, the point I was saying is, is no one gets out of this world alive, uh, except for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and a few other astronauts. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can't take it with you. I know. Uh, right now I'm rambling on. Um, uh, oh, um, I had a list of three questions here. Uh, I've gotten to the first one. Um, how did I end up homeless? And I rambled on for a bit. Uh, second question, uh, how did you find your bomb shelter? Um, I looked. Um, Simple thing is, uh, if you look hard enough, you can find a place. Um, now, squatting is illegal um, anywhere you do it. Uh, you're gonna be breaking the law if you're staying in a bush or staying in an abandoned house. Um, you're breaking the law. Um, being homeless, makes you a criminal. And now I'm not saying go out and rob banks or anything, but hey, if you're desperate enough, uh, jail and prison provide three hot meals a day, uh, a roof over your head and you never get rained on. Um, you know, some of them even provide you with a job. Uh, you can uh, make license plates or <laughs> t-shirts or, um, internet call centers in some places. Uh, anyway, don't commit any like real heavy crimes if you want to get into a low security uh, jail, prison with a um, job program and possibly furloughs. Uh, commit, you know, low crime. Um, oh, uh, and if you're gonna be a criminal, uh, you know, um, it's not much more of a penalty for staying in an abandoned house than it is for staying in a bush. Um, and all you have to do is look. Uh, if you look hard enough and you know what to look for, um, you can find places. Uh, if you're looking for an abandoned house, uh, look for a yard that's totally overgrown. Uh, dirt in the driveway, uh, paint chipping off the walls, boarded up windows, that kind of stuff. And uh, my advice, act like you belong there. 
mow the yard, uh, take the boards off the windows, hook up the electricity. Uh, you can usually do that. Um, well, I can do it um, by taking the meter off and then pulling the plastic tabs off the uh, connectors uh, and then putting the meter back on. Um, but <laughs> hey, I mean, it's illegal anyway, but you can do it legally if you want. Uh, go to the power company. Uh, if you have access to a library, they've got a computer and a printer. You can print up a fake lease agreement uh, and sign it and uh, take it out of the power company and have the power turned on. You can have the water turned on. You can have the utilities hooked up. Uh, but if you, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a place you can get away with staying for a little while, um, but I mean, if you can be evicted any time or lose your house in a storm at any time or you know, have the cops come and kick you out at any time, uh, you might as well be not having to pay rent. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am not encouraging anyone to break the law. I'm not encouraging anyone to... Uh, to do anything that um, would harm themselves or others. Uh, I'm saying if you find yourself in a drastic situation, there are drastic solutions. Um, my advice, um, don't do them uh, legally. Uh, I have to say that as a disclaimer, otherwise I might be arrested or sued for conspiracy. I don't know. Uh, Oh, and uh, how do you do so much stuff with your disability? Um, I have this wonderful uh, rolling office chair um, that I do most of my stuff in. Um, I, uh, my arms are still fairly strong. Uh, I can pick up five gallon jugs of water. Um, what I do is I take the empty jugs, I put them in my trailer, I take them to the park, I hook up a hose to the uh, spigot, and uh, I fill up my jugs in the trailer. Then I bring the trailer back to camp with my scooter, um, and I sit in my rolling office chair. I unload the five gallon jugs from the trailer onto my lap in the rolling office chair, I push them over to my shower, and then I load them on to the 55 gallon drum, dump them into the 55 gallon drum. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, when I weed whack, I've got a uh, plastic lawn chair, I, uh, hook a bungee cord to, and then I hook the bungee cord to my belt loop, drag the chair behind me uh, to where I want to weed whack. I set the chair uh, where I can, set my crutches down, uh, grab the weed whacker, uh, which I have conveniently put, uh, drug out there with my scooter and put it in the location where I want to weed whack. Uh, anyway, uh, I sit in the plastic chair, weed whack everything I can reach, uh, from the plastic chair, uh, move, get up with the crutches, move the plastic chair forward, set the chair down, weed whack again, you know. Uh, yes, uh, everything takes longer than it would if I, um, didn't have my disability. Uh, and yes, my solutions are sometimes creative, uh, down at where I dump my trash in this huge hole. Uh, it's 50 foot deep with a concrete slab over it and a little square opening uh, that I will never fill up, but I have my own dump basically that I found out here in the sugarcane fields. Uh, and uh, I have a board, uh, an old piece of plywood that is no longer usable for building uh, with a rope tied to it. I throw the rope over my uh, head, wrap it across my chest, and I Tow the board with the trash bag on it up to the dump. Throw the trash in the dump and then pull the board back out to where it's next, uh, where I can pull up to it with my scooter and trailer. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Well, watch uh, the videos on YouTube with, uh, what is it, Asian people working with disabilities um, for finding creative solutions. You, I mean, these guys are amazing. The shit that I do is minor compared to the, I mean, these guys are, this is a guy with a missing leg that he is stuck the stump through a crutch, a regular crutch, and he's using it as a, like a, an artificial limb, uh, and he's hauling around 50 pound bags of concrete, and like, there's a guy with no arms digging with a shovel, like, yeah, there, um, there are people a lot more impressive than me out there doing it, so, um, yeah. Uh, The stuff that I do with my disability is slow and it's thought out um, and uh, I don't think I can do near the work that some people do with disabilities. Um, but uh, yeah, um, anyway those are the uh, three top questions that I get asked and I figured I'd make a video answering them. And, uh, Holy crap, it's almost a half an hour long. <laughs> uh, sorry for the length, thanks for watching. Uh, please, if you have a few bucks um, that you can spare, um, uh, I'm always working on projects and I can use funding. Uh, it keeps me busy, it keeps me going, uh, it gives me a reason to live, a reason to go on. Um, and uh, without you, I can't do it. Um, I, uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for my PayPal email. Um, um, please hit the subscribe button if you're watching me on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching me on Facebook, there's a link. Uh, Please visit my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. Um, and I will make you videos of awesome projects and show you how to rebuild your life if you do lose everything or even if you just want to live off the grid. Um, yeah. Um, Daddy, come. For those of you who stuck to the video long enough to see the end of it, this is Savannah. You get your puppy fix for the day. I, I know, I know. Uh, she is adorable, and uh, she helps me with lots of projects. Um, yes, yes, I love you. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, God bless you and yours, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Oh, uh, if you have any more questions about homelessness, about me personally, uh, about projects I'm working on, uh, the comment section, 100% yours, uh, ask any questions and I will answer them. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, love you tons.